In this lesson, you're gonna learn how to create a vase shape multi-grafted apple tree as we've done here in the home orchard with a reddish green variety, which is one of our childhood favorite apples as well as Granny Smith, Gala, and now we've added two more varieties of apple, including Fuji, as well as the Golden Dorset for a total of five flavors of apple, all capitalizing on maximum light and ultimately maximum yields. And it all starts with a little apple tree like this. So tip number one is to encourage low growing branches. And we did this with our 10 and one fig tree before we grafted it with 10 flavors of figs. What we did is we pruned it down to about 18 inches off the ground and in the middle of summer, which can put the plant into shock and result in plant death. But assuming that it grows into growth as you still got those summer months and it's still a growing time of the year, we're able to capitalize on one extra year of growth. And fortunately the plant actually pushed out shoots that we then were able to train. And the importance with this tip of having low growing branches is it's gonna give us a structure that is closer to the ground and that we can graft close to you know the ground as most of those commercial purchased grafted fruit trees are usually grafted within a few inches of the ground on that root stock. And similarly, you're gonna to wanna to graft as close as you can to the ground if it's not within a few inches, within a foot or two is also okay as we've done here on the five and one soon to be apple tree that we've got here on our property. And then the goal is by grafting closer to the ground, and that's the reason to have low growing and low developed branches, is I can now convert each of those branches into flavors that will ultimately support all the different varieties of apples. And also you'll get to enjoy them over an extended season. For example, again, this variety of apple that I've got next to me ripen in midsummer compared to the Granny Smith apples just behind me that don't ripen until November, December. So I'm able to enjoy apples over about a four to six month period of time instead of having to harvest all the apples within a matter of a few weeks in the middle of summer. Tip number two is to then train the branches using stakes. I know a lot of research out there will say in a matter of weeks and within that first year, you should be taking the stake away from the tree so it can harden. However, when it comes to training a tree to create that base shaped structure that you're gonna get to enjoy for decades to come, it's important that you make sure that that stake is there and that that branch is in the position that you desire it. And also the consideration when creating that base shaped structure is you're capitalizing on light making sure that each of those grafts are getting sufficient light to support sufficient yields on each of those flavors you've grafted upon it. Additionally, that vase-shaped structure will help also increase light and air penetration as well, which will also result in less disease within the plant as well, resulting in a healthier plant, longer lasting plant, and more yields you'll get to enjoy off of that plant on your property. Tip number three, is grafting. My favorite grafting method is the approach graft as it can be applied from the time of spring growth all the way through summer and even early fall in warmer grow zones. The goal is you need about three to six weeks of growth period where the two plants are aligned next to one another and grafted. I then use a nylon string to basically unite the two cambium tissues and the cambium layer is just underlying the bark and just a few cells thick. As long as the cambium tissues are in contact with one another, healing will begin within that first week. But generally within about three, closer to about six to eight weeks, you'll have grafting success, at which point you can then separate the scion wood from the root stock and then you'll have a standalone graft upon that root stock that you've grafted onto that desired flavor of apple. Tip number four is pruning the graft. And after about six to eight weeks is an ideal time to then prune. If you see that in fact, the cambium tissues between the rootstock and the scion have calloused sufficiently, which you'll be able to clearly see since you're using nylon string, using the method that I teach. And what you're going to then do is prune the bottom of the scion wood and then the top of the rootstock, and then you'll have the standalone scion wood on top of the rootstock to then grow from the years to come. In the first year, you should not allow that scion to fruit as that added weight, as you can imagine on a broken arm, is gonna be a little bit too much stress and can weaken that graft. So the goal in the first year should be growth, and in the years to follow, hopefully you're gonna be enjoying those delicious fruit that that grafted scion is gonna offer. Tip number five is to now protect the grafted wound with the Ivory Organics 
three in one plant guard. What this product offers is a seven natural oil protection, which is not just going to repel rodents, but more importantly, it's gonna keep disease and insects from penetrating those exposed wound areas. Additionally, the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard has diatomaceous earth, which is kind of like glass on the exoskeleton of insects. So if any insects try to bore in and out of the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard, it's gonna scratch up their exoskeletons, they're gonna dry out, and it's gonna basically lead to their early death. Compared to the Ivory Organic Whitewash formula, sometimes referred to as the Blue Label, that's an oil-free formula, which still offers protection for those grafted wounds from damaging summer sunburn, as well as winter sun scald, but it doesn't have the added seven oils for the insect and rodent repellent protection. Additionally, the oils that you'll find in the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard also offers antifungal protection such as that garlic and cinnamon among other oils to also further protect those grafting wounds. Tip number six is to then protect the tree trunk lower branches with the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard. You can also use the whitewash formula. The goal now with the summertime is to protect the tree trunk and lower branches from damaging summer sunburn. In the winter, it also offers insulation and most of the orchards across America are using a whitewash formula to protect their tree trunks from the damaging results of winter. And what happens during the winter months is you have some days that are also warm and the plant will begin to grow above ground, but the roots are still in a freezing cold soil and, and remain dormant. And so what happens is the plant above ground begins to dry while the roots continuously remain dormant below ground and a phenomenon known as sun scald and the drying out of the plant happens above ground. By whitewashing your plants in summer going into fall to offer your plants the best protection going into winter, you're best helping the plants not wake up during those fall spring days that we get as winter transitions into spring, resulting in much healthier plant performance come spring and summer. Feed your trees and they'll feed you. Be sure to feed your plants with the Ivory Organics All-Purpose Fertilizers, which offer your plants all of the macronutrients plants need. Most people and most fertilizers are just focused on NPK, but the macronutrients plants need, the nutrients plants need in abundance, are nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, as well as magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. And Ivory Organics All-Purpose Fertilizers deliver all of that. The Super Blend specifically has added azomite, which is volcanic crushed rock for those micronutrients, which also plants need in order to have optimal plant health, longevity, and productivity. Be sure to feed your fruit trees three times a year with the Ivory Organics All-Purpose Fertilizers, spring, summer, and early fall. You can also gauge the amount of fertilizers as we've done in many charts over the years, where you're gonna wanna offer your plants the maximum amount of fertilizer in the summer months as the light hours are peaking, 14 hours of daylight, warmest temperatures, highest plant metabolism, growing, fruiting, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure your plants have all of the elements that it needs. Compared to in spring, as the plant wakes up, you can cut the recommended dose by 50%, and the same going into early fall. You can cut back again about 50% as the plant now enters the hibernation months. But you're still gonna to wanna to make sure your plant has all of the nutrition it needs for optimal health from season to season. If you've enjoyed this educational lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us that thumbs up, and most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family. And as always, Keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening. So we've started, you know, with the three branches below, one, two, and three, and pull them apart in three different directions. And now with these branches, I've done the same, the same concept as we've done with the bottom of the plant. We're actually pulling them to grow in three different directions. Um, you know, with them growing, you know, three different directions. We've used the chopsticks to actually pull the plant apart into its varying um, locations.